Happy Thursday. Welcome to the Prime Real Estate Network podcast. I'm your host, Rick Davis. I follow you. I urge you to follow me on social media at Prime Real Estate Rick. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Prime Real Estate Rick and Prime Real Estate Network. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in residential or commercial real estate, please visit the Brooks and Davis Facebook page. If you are an aspiring realtor, a real estate professional that's looking for a change or you are currently studying towards your real estate license, Please visit our website at brooksanddavis.com so you can learn everything about getting involved in this fast-growing industry. As always, my co-host is sitting here riding with me on episode 145, hmm. and we're still alive and kicking. Hmm. He is a Texas real estate broker, multi-time author, serial entrepreneur, known in North America, South America, Africa, and Asia <laughs> as the Texas real estate America. king. <laughs> Blowing and glowing in a gold polo shirt is the Texas real estate king, Mr. Larry W. Brooks. What's happening, my brother? Hey, give me a man. Hey, hey, hey. hey. You know what I'm saying? I, I knew I knew our guests was gonna come in here and you know had the colors on, so I need to make sure I had a little light on my day. Don't hey, today, too. Hey man, we gotta bring the sunshine all the way yellow up, in. Man, look, when the energy in the studio is yeah. at an all time high, we both <laughs> gotta make sure we have our thing all the way dialed have in. Too, have all too. the way dressed to the nines and ready for everything, man. Because hey, every hey, those of you that are on the podcast that are not that have not tuned in and locked into the YouTube page, you wanna do that because you need to see what we see that's all i'm saying <laughs> hey, look. clock so look man without any further ado larry let's introduce this week's guest no doubt about it it is both larry and i's pleasure to introduce this week's guest she is not only a noted television producer philanthropist but Thanks. she is also the star of season four of on network's hit series ready to love Holding it down with us on a Thursday where she could be anywhere on earth. I mm -hmm. want to thank our guest this week, Miss Alexis Fly Jones. How are you doing? Hi, what's going on, Rick and Larry? Oh, my God. This is like the best introduction. Y'all are so sweet. I'm thinking, you know, he introducing you. I'm like the Texas real estate king. Nah, I think you more like global, baby. You worldwide. I appreciate that. That's you what I'm talking about. Saying? See, that's what family, that's how family talk to you, yeah. man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Everybody, yeah. if you're trying to find a house, this is the mirror right here. <laughs> you know, Any type of property. No, me, but Miss Alexis, though, the reason I was so excited about um, you sitting in with us is because I've watched several of your interviews. Of course, I've watched you on Ready to Love. I've yeah. had the opportunity to do my research as far as your professional background. Mm -hmm. And I just was so excited because I was hoping that with you and Larry's background, yeah. I could ask you some questions that ask other people you hadn't want. asked you <laughs> publicly. And, yeah. and this is one of the first things is because with your background as a television producer, mm -hmm. for years yeah. you've worked behind the camera. Yeah. And you've had... Um, intimate professional relationships with the on-air talent. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you've heard some of their insecurities, yep. some of their complaints, some of the things that they go through. Now becoming an on-air talent mm. and being one of those faces yeah. in the entertainment sphere, yeah. what mm -hmm. could you share with our audience that you've gleaned as far as experience that you didn't necessarily appreciate when you were behind the camera? Ooh, child. I did. Let me tell you something. <laughs> being behind the camera is one thing for sure. But being then trans, you know, firing into the front of the camera is a completely different thing. I think a lot of people thought that because I was a producer going into this show, Ready Love, that I already knew what to do, what to say, that mm -hmm. I kind of was ahead of the game, as right. to say. But really, I wasn't. And for one reason, being that I worked in news, so it's and I worked on a lifestyle show, a talk show. Wow. So whatever I produced was factual information. It was, you know, things that were happening in the community, things that were happening in the news, completely different from reality TV. Mm -hmm. I really went went in um, as just a regular person who, yes, happens to be a producer in news, but I didn't know what I was getting myself into right. or what was going to go down. Let me say that. But I'll tell you this to answer your question in terms of having an appreciation from, you know, working with other personalities, anchors, things like that. Right. Um, I have a lot of empathy now, having been in front of the camera. <laughs> Come on. Okay. There okay. Are, yeah, there are a lot of things that personalities go through you know, um, quietly, secretly that you will never know. One of the things that um, they went through that I also have now experienced is what I don't really like to highlight, but I'm going to be real transparent today. Yeah, yeah. It's called the trolls, the haters, you know, <laughs> with su success, it breeds contempt, you know, yeah. and you're thinking you're going on and people are going to love you because you're just going to be yourself and tell your truth. 
And the next thing you know, you receive all types of judgment from your hair mm. to what you how you dress. Oh, she ain't as fly as she talking about. Her wow. brand ain't fly. You know, all that kind of stuff. There's a lot of, along with the good stuff that yeah. comes with it, there's a lot of negativity that I mm. knew would come, but I don't think I was mentally prepared for it. Mm. And it reminded me of some of the things that have been shared with me, mm. with me working with talent that, you know, that they didn't, that they would secretly have some issues with. So, for instance, if some if, if the talent was, you know, dealing with, you know, opinions from, I wouldn't call them fans because fans don't necessarily hate on you like but that. But the audience. The audience, yeah. you right. know. They would always say, I don't look at that stuff. I don't look at the comments. I don't da-da-da-da. And I would just be like, why? Why do you care about what these people think? You yeah, know, it doesn't right. matter. Like, you're in your position, man. You're the one on TV. <laughs> but people don't realize that people are people. And we have feelings, too. Humans, and yeah. so let me tell you, with now being on the other side, yes, you know, uh, I was on 11 out of 12 episodes, too. Uh, shout out to Will Packer Productions because they on right now watching. <laughs> you know, I appreciate you. you know, appreciate people, y'all, you no have, doubt. Yeah, I appreciate y'all. Let's, let's be on network. I appreciate you. You know, a lot of people, a lot of the fans, you know, be like, dang, we always see an Alexis. Alexis on every episode, you know, she on every uh, promo, she on every commercial. And I think just from a producer standpoint, I think it was because, you know, the feistiness that I had, a little firecracker mm-hmm. that I have and uh, this energy that I bring, they knew that that would probably, you know, carry the interest of the show a little bit. They knew they could get a little drama, you know what I'm saying? Because um, <laughs> I'm, I'm very fiery, you know, I'm, I'm small, but I'm mighty. I say what I say. I'm very yeah. outspoken. I'm not afraid to, yeah. to speak. And so, you know, they kind of utilize that. Email the Prime Real Estate Network today and learn more about this exciting new program. Welcome back to the Prime Real Estate Network podcast. I'm your host, Rick Davis. If you don't follow me on Instagram, follow me at Prime Real Estate Rick. If you don't follow this show on Instagram, follow it at Prime Real Estate Network. As always, my co-host is the Texas Real Estate King, Mr. Larry W. Brooks. What's up, brother? Man, brother? listen, I'm in here entertained, side hurt, side hurt a little bit from some of the stuff going on, but you know I'm always inspired when I'm about when I'm around Alexis Fly. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> Come on, oh, friend. Goodness. Ten plus years backwards. You know Come on now. <laughs> hey, Brooksy, man. Uh, I appreciate you for getting Miss Alexis to agree to sit in with us, man. I know sometimes, especially when you have those long serving relationships. You don't necessarily want to push in the favor button all the sure. time. I, I'm yeah. going to put the pressure on. Right. <laughs> put the pressure on. Hey, hey, look, man. Shout out. Oh, I know you want to um, thank all of our people who yeah. support us on YouTube, Facebook, and Patreon. No doubt about it. So for everyone out there, continue to support the channel. Again, follow us on YouTube. Subscribe. Look at some of the videos. By the fact, if you put in the comment section, if you know someone that's out there that's doing amazing things that are that are stepping up, kind of like I guess Miss Alexa's fly today, and you want to see them on a the podcast, please reach out for us. We'd love to follow up with them on that. But our friends on Facebook, you know, we appreciate you. Make sure that you go to the YouTube page and catch the second. Also, been really impressed with are some of your philanthropic endeavors yes. and the foundation that you founded. Um, could you please talk to our audience about Dear Black Son? Yes. What motivated you and why you're so passionate about that endeavor? Absolutely. I want to first say that, you know, community service is very important to me. Obviously, you know, I was blessed to become a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> Shout out. To like my, that crimson and cream. Rock, crimson, yeah. you know, know what it is? Crimson <laughs> and cream. Um, and so when it comes to giving back to the community, um, that's one thing I know that I was created for. Yeah. Getting to Dear Black Sun and how that was formed. It started back uh, in, let's see, sometime in 2020. You know, we're, we've all been dealing in social unrest for a very long time. But specifically something about 2020, all of a sudden, everybody yeah. was concerned about the black people. OK. Yeah, right. And so. <laughs> Preach. Yeah. So uh, I remember when Ahmaud Aubrey was murdered. Um, that's what triggered me to create Dear Black Son. I was actually on Instagram. And let me tell you, working in news, you know, you always hear about something happening in our community or we're losing our, our men and, and our boys. And a lot of times you are desensitized, you know, yeah. because you hear about it all the time. But when I was on Instagram, the video popped up and then I was forced to look at it. Mm-hmm. And when I saw it, something in me completely broke because at this point, I believe my son, my son was five years old. He had just turned five. Wow. And I immediately thought, oh, my gosh, you know, what is the conversation I'm going to have to have with him in the next 10 years? You know, yeah. when he begins to drive and he gets pulled over by a police officer or the first time that somebody calls him the N-word, because mm. even 15 years later, somebody's going to say it, somebody mm-hmm. somewhere. Mm-hmm. Like, how do I talk to him and knowing that he was getting ready to transition into a new school where it was more diverse? He was no longer going to be going to an all-black school. Yeah. Like, mm. 
you know, what is that going to look like? And so after I saw that video, I was like, God, what can I do? What talent that I that the gifts and the talents that you've given me, how can I use that um, to create a message for black men and for black boys and so initially i was just gonna get my line sisters together we were gonna just go to the park and jog in ahmaud aubrey's uh, memory he passed away february 23rd so we were gonna you know jog 2.23 mm-hmm. miles and mm-hmm. that was gonna be it and then the holy ghost was like oh no ma'am <laughs> it's gonna be more than that you're going to produce a short poetic film this yeah. is what i want you and he literally downloaded y'all it was coming so fast i had to grab a, grab a notepad and mm-hmm. begin to write out the treatment and I called up my line sisters. I said, I need to cash all in this because, you know, we need to throw up this diamond. The reason why we're throwing it up, because a lot of people don't know that the pyramid actually means change. Uh-huh. So that's why you see it in this video. Um, and I decided I want to put it in black and white because there's no gray areas. You either with us or you're not with us. Right. What side of the team? Oh, that's deep. Yeah, right. Yeah. And so um, and then I had my line sister. I told her to write a poem. I told her what I would want it to state. You know, basically hired her as to say as the writer. And I put this all together. And so if you go on YouTube or you go to Dear BLK sun.org you can watch the video and um blk stands for black liberating kings um and it started off as just a video my first film that i executive produced on my own cast it put the funding behind it all that and now i'm working i got i just got a trademarked after six months of going through that process yay congratulations yes it's trademarked it's officially mine y'all can't steal it hello praise (laughs) the lord there it is